I've got a new tutorial today, and this one is based on a comment that I got on a previous video. It's how to do a volume slider. You can watch the first half of this to learn how to make a slider inside of Flinto using a scroll group. And keep watching if you want to see how to do a cool behavior that makes the little volume indicator interactive where the little sound waves animate out as you do the slider. This is based on a comment somebody left a couple days ago. So if you'd like to see a tutorial or if you're having an issue with something and you'd like me to explain it, leave a comment on this video and there's a really good chance that I'll make a video about it in the future. Flinto doesn't have a native slider functionality, but oftentimes you can get the effect that you want by using a scroll group. So I've set up this little volume interaction here, but I've got these two curve layers here and I've kind of hidden them so they're overlapping the speaker, but let me just pull them out. And those are gonna get revealed as you slide the volume up. So I'm just gonna undo that. So the way I'm gonna set up the slider is to put the slider inside of a group first. So, I mean the handle of the slider actually. So I'm gonna put that in a group and I'm gonna make it scroll. So I can actually use the scroll group shortcut. I'll click that. That puts a group around it and turns on vertical scrolling. Now I'm going to adjust the size of this scroll area so that it goes to the top of the slider and the bottom of the slider. So now I can slide it up, but because it's, uh, you know, the handle is at the bottom of the scroll group, going up doesn't really get me anywhere and it goes down, but then it's like off the bottom. And the content size is the same size as the scroll area, so it doesn't really scroll anywhere. So let's fix these things. First, the content size. How high do we want this to be? So if I move it down here, that means that I can now scroll and this handle will move up. So let me just move it way down go back into the preview, but now it scrolls off the top. So I want it to stop right when it gets here. So let's take a look at how high the track is. The track is 100 points tall. So that means that the content area should probably be double that because it includes the scroll area plus this extra space. So let's make it 200 and now let's see what happens. Okay, it's still going off the top. And I think that's because the handle itself has some size to it and the total scroll distance is not quite 200, but I have to subtract out the height of the handle, I think. So let's try that. The handle is 10 points tall. So let's make the content height minus 10, 190 points. So that looks better. Now the scrolling has this momentum and the bounce, which isn't usually how, how a slider works because it can go past the top and everything. So I'm gonna select the scroll group and come down here to options and turn off bounce. Okay, back to the preview. Now it doesn't go past the end and it doesn't bounce and it doesn't have the momentum. And that's what I want for a slider. So now it works quite like a slider, even though it's a scroll area, it looks just like a slider. Okay, so now we know how to make a slider. The next thing I wanna do is set it up so that the volume indicator changes as I scroll. And that's just a simple um, scroll-based behavior. So I'll go through it real quick. Um, I've got a group that goes around everything, the track, the handle, and the speaker, and I'm gonna add a behavior to it. I'm gonna make a new state, and in this state, I want the first line of this speaker to pop out and fade in. So I'm just shifting it over, fading it in, and let's go make a new state. And in this state, the second one is gonna fade in. And let me just slide that one over about like that. And now I just need a way to get between these different states. And the way I'm gonna get from the initial state to this mid volume one is by scrolling. So I'm gonna go on the initial state, select the scroll group, create a link and target the second state. And it's important that the gesture is set to scroll. And remember that only works if the link is created from a scroll group. Okay, now the range, I want it to be halfway, so 50. Let's go from zero to 50. And then from this state, another scroll link going to the last state. And this time it'll go from 50 to, to 100. And so it's gonna pick up where the last one left off and then go the rest of the way. All right, let's try that. Okay, I can see a couple problems already. Uh, first, it doesn't get all the way to the end. And I realize that's because the scroll range should actually be 
a little smaller, I think, for this second one. So the one going from here, I think I need to move that up to 90. Again, that's to account for the size of the handle. Okay, back to the preview. And now we go to the first state, and there's the second state. Okay, so it works. But the one thing that I'd like to improve, I think that the, as you go from the second state here to the third state, the little bar, the, um, the sound wave, I'd like it if it started right about here and then faded out. So let's make it so that in the second state, that bar starts to move already. And so it's still invisible, but it's gonna be positioned on top of the other one so that as we go to the third state, it fades in as it moves out. I think that's gonna look a little nicer. And let me show you what I mean. So there's the first one. Now the second one, instead of coming from the body of the speaker, it's just coming from the second sound wave. There we go, that's the finished interaction.